Yeah, it's crazy. Video. And guess what? Death. The reason why I wrote it down on my hand, the band, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. That's why I, I fucking strive to make as much music as I do, because I'm like, time is limited. Is he wants to be the next Chuck Norris? He wants to start... No, no, the heavy metal. Time is limited, right? So it's like, put out those fucking albums, like, show your chronological mindset through your, like, you know, like, I want this album more like this, I want this album more like that. Not only that, though, but his song, A Thousand Eyes on the Symbolic Record, <laughs> that was a dick. <laughs> so the eyes of the ranger are upon you. He has a song that, called A Thousand Eyes. Came out in 95. Smell it, dude. Smell it. I'm okay. Because. See so yourself. We're going to get in trouble for that. No. It's called A Thousand Eyes. <laughs> and basically, the song's about. There's no you more. You can blur it. <laughs> blur it out. Blur it out. little black mm-hmm. thing. No, no, not the black. The better one is the the blur that's like flesh color yeah. blur with like the movements. The song it came out in '95 called a "Thousand Eyes," talking about that in the future there's gonna be no more privacy. I all there's gonna be watched twenty four seven. There's gonna be cameras everywhere. And then his the death lead guy started another band called Control Denied. And the last album, but he died, didn't make it. It was going to be called When Man and Machine Collide. So it's when man and robotics and uh, electronics can, uh, collide. He was a fucking visionary. Like, that's why I want to hear what that shit would have been. What he had to say. That's not how. When electronics uh, collide? No, when man and machine collide. And, and the, the whole basis of it, what his band member said, is that he wanted to make the next Control the Night album. Not Death, but he wanted to get away from Death, the band. Because he was like, you know, he made that when he was young. He wanted to, <laughs> he wanted to get away from that because he was like, you know, that, that had death metal things, but he wanted to go more like progressive, deathy style. And then uh, the, the last album that he was working on was called When Man and Machine Collide. I think, I think uh, uh, Jim Morrison of The Doors predicted electronic music. They asked him, what do you think, what was The Doors? Early 70s? Mid 70s kind of? Late 60s and shit? Like, yeah, yeah, they were something. like, I think they were more prominent and popular in the 70s. Yeah. And they asked, if they asked him, he was kind of a guy before his time, you know? He was like a smart dude. And he was like, they asked him, what do you think music going to be? And, you know, whatever. 30, 40 years from now, he was just like, I think it's all going to be people manipulating machines to create sounds. Look at the fucking organ player, right? The bass player? Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, organ? yeah he was, well, there was keyboards already. And stuff yeah, like that's, that. that's Now right. they get, now they have whole festivals, ED, EDM, whole festivals based on just that genre of music. Yes, yeah. electronic music. It's crazy. Well, just like I remember, I was talking yeah, at my girl's house. How the next rap that's gonna be popular is like super, super distorted, just like fucking. Oh yeah. Like just sound like noise. It's, I think rap's gonna evolve into that just for a, a phase. Metal rap. Like right now, it's it's mumble rap. Metal rap, you said. When Metal I rap. when I think distorted rapping, I think of like Beastie Boys, fucking. Communication. Or license, well, okay, so imagine, imagine oh, yeah, the vocals of that, but with trap beats. Fast trap beat. I mean, trap beats with fast rap. Because if you listen at like so what you want, right? And the, yeah. and the vocals are like kind of distorted. That, yes, you know what I mean. Uh, just like that. That's exactly what I mean. Things have been done already before, but it takes. So a now they're gonna put to it catch on. Over <coughs> a trap beat. Yeah. It's I've already, I've already so heard. Cool. I've already heard shit that's already sounding like that. It's like fuck. Well, um, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Thing, like scowl. All I know is that I'm gonna turn Indigenous Days. It's an EP into an album. So I'm gonna release a second. 
That's why. Because I, I was listening to Death earlier. And it made me realize, I was like, that fucking mother, that fucking guy died at 31. Who? Right? No. Chuck, the Death uh, singer and guitar player. But, because someone wrote a comment when the Screenplay Glory came out and they said, Chuck released this when he was 20. This fucking masterpiece. And I'm uh, 25 and I have not done anything significant with my life. And I was like, fuck. Why are you reading my comments, the mass? Oh, it was out over here. No, but I think about that. And like you look at fucking Tupac, right? Tupac. He's not the best. He's not the worst. Tupac is Tupac. We have a lot of people love his shit. He spoke from the heart. He died when he was 25. So like, look at that impact he had. At 25, that seems like... Tupac actually had a six-pack. Six-pack a year. Like, imagine that. Imagine dying at 25. It's like, what, what did you leave behind? That fucker left. Probably not. 18 to 25. A whole... Like, that shit will just keep going on. Some kid. It's my kid. Wait, that's kid how he was living in Bolivia with Hitler. Oh, Elvis. Elvis and Che Guevara. Fuck. You're right. Well, hey, you can't tell the secret. You can't expose the secrets. Cut it. Cut. Keep the podcast. Cut. Keep the pinkies. Keep it. It all gets cut off. <laughs> like, oh, conspiracy. Breaking news. That's why, that's why I strive for that shit, because I, really, I understand. I'm like, fuck, all my favorite fucking artists are gone. All my favorite comedians, all my favorite, and then I thought I was like, "Is it because they're dead?" Is why I I like them more subconsciously. Like, <sighs> oh, they're dead, so that means that their work was better because they're dead. And I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm just like, you listen to death, brilliant shit sometimes. But then if if fucking. Say James Hetfield died in like '95, then I'd probably look back at Hit the Leap and or no, I'd kill him all. No, that no. shit. Like that was the best shit ever, Steve. Like I don't know, but undeniably, that shit. Hold that, on, dude. I'm trying to watch fucking Children's Christmas Play here. <laughs> what the about. fuck? <laughs> was that Snapchat? <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, it's funny to me how like people like younger than me are like so proud to be like a parent. It's like they to be what to be a parent. Like a parent, they did all this. Okay, they did everything you did, right? No, yeah. You know, okay, you went to school, they graduated, and they're like, I want to go to work and pop out a bunch of kids, even though I can't afford it. Yeah, and it's like. And that's like that's their life yeah and they love it and I just don't get it I'm like yeah. why do you love it because this is something you already like premeditated like you have to kind of like you, sign you yourself premeditated out it and this is something that you wanted to do or do you love it because you manipulated yourself into loving it yeah sure. because you have to wait wait it. hold that thought that because I'm a parent now. I know, yeah. Let me get my other phone. And you're younger than Casey. I'm alright. I'm alright. Just kidding. I'm not alright. Fucking Maybe they're just trying to cope with their fucking parent. And that's your fucking life. It's like the, it's just like weird, it's hard to, I don't know, do you know, you know what I'm saying though, like, it's just like weird to me, because, then again, I'm 32, with no plans of having kids, I mean, at the very moment. Keep going, keep going, I want to hear this, I really do, because I've been I, tripping lately, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, I'm a dad or anything? No, it's, if, one of the decisions I made with my ex was I had to put heart and reality Second. Yeah. So like, All right. I love this woman. She has a kid. It's long, it became long distance. 
and she's an illegal immigrant. It's like, damn, do I really want all that load? Do I really want all that? Or There's two ways you can look at it. You can take it and stride and be like, fuck yeah. Or it can be like, or reality, quote unquote. Then you can be like, oh fuck, it was it was a heavy load to take. Yeah, and it wasn't that I couldn't take it. take it. It was because I did it for years with her, even long distance we did it. But it was just like to a point where like, I had like a lot going for me and re- realistically I was just like, by the way, the mass, I want to <laughs> fucking... <laughs> it's upset. Yeah, realistically, always go, always, always go with logic. Yeah. I feel like. Which is sometimes hard for me because I wear my heart in my sleeve and I know you do too a lot. Yes. Art's the mystery man, you don't know. It's just like it's got and Diesel's the pa- feeling. Hey, hey, Diesel's the passive yeah. aggressive. A greasy. <laughs> passive and greasy. Wait, so there's a nice balance of emotions. What were we saying about the, the parent thing? I wanna hear that because I'm offended. <laughs> no, I was kidding. No, no, what were we saying? Yeah, fucking man. Okay. Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic. Give me the meek. No, no, no I, I need to hear it. I need to hear it. I feel like there's like A and there's B. There's A. So there's people who literally like like little boys and girls who already know when they're fucking like in grade school that they want to be a parent. That's it. They want to. They want to go to school. They want to graduate. Like it's school, a goal for them. And it's a goal for them. It's a goal before. It's a it's a goal and a priority before prior, priorities that should come before that. Like in my opinion, like going to school. I was never a school person, but that would be the next thing after high school to be go to college and then getting your fucking degree and then getting. Uh, a career and building a new career and establishing more skills yeah. and then finding a wife and then after having a wife getting a kid not the other way around not having a kid getting a career and then having a girlfriend like, like but things happen in life and I think when those things happen in life you have to you have to roll with the punches and you gotta make it work and I think it hey, also makes you stronger too I, I say this but some people they let it like that becomes like their main asset in life like I just go I just go to work to pop out more kids and take care of those kids because I love little babies and I love watching them grow up and they have this weird obsession of like oh I miss it when my little kid was in second grade and they're in the Christmas play and now one of my kids we should have another one and they do yeah some people they literally do that crazy shit like we should have another one because I miss those early stages of their child's life and it's like now they're like in you know, high school and they're teenagers and they're fucking, you know, uh, 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 just biological assholes. They're yeah. just like raging with hormones and like, they're just like, fuck, I wish I had a little baby. And like, I'm at the point where I'm 32 now, so my friends are having babies and shit. Yeah. I'm seeing stuff on, you know, right here, has a baby. My fucking it's weird, Carmen, right? Carmen, Carmen has a baby. My friend Clara, she moved out to fucking Minnesota, has a baby. I'm just like, damn. Here's one thing, here's one thing. <laughs> hey, one thing that I figured out. Not because I have a kid now, though, but I realized certain people, like, you know how many thoughts going through your mind about that shit, right? About, like, why did they have kids and shit? And then I, for the longest time, I always had that thought in my mind that my I was an accident. I There's no other way to put it. I was a fucking accident. Yeah. For sure, for sure. I've even told my mom that, right? To tell your mom, like, hey, I know I'm a nice kid. And my mom will try to bullshit her way out of it. And I'm like, what the fuck can you tell me? My dad was 15. My, my, you were 18. Yeah, you were an accident in being conceived in, uh, what do you call it? Being getting pregnant. Yeah, conceived. Conceived, yeah. In being conceived. But you're not an accident as far as your mom standing by and going. No, no, not, no not that. But yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it as a strictly... Uh, and the you way I think about life, you weren't planned. Not planned, but I, I don't think about it as like all these emotions. I think about so it you're as think. You're, you're saying what I'm saying. You're not like when uh, uh, a couple gets married and they both have one's a doctor and one's a lawyer. Yeah. And then they have a house, and then they're like, you know what? I think we're well off. We live in the suburbs. We're an upper middle class family. We should, we should have start a kids. family. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, we have and a three bedroom up, house, and, and, then, good and then that's the practical college, way of doing it. College fun for the kids doing, and all that. Exactly, yeah. that's the proper set to take. And when you don't, you have three kids, and you live in fucking, you know, assisted housing. You know, yeah. Assisted housing, and people go, oh, why, why are they live in the high crime? Right? It's, yeah, it's because you did shit backwards, you retard. Yep. It's, you know exactly. what I mean? And it's like, I'm not one to talk, you know what I mean? But I'm talking, so fuck Yep. It. Hey, guess what? When me and, me and my girl found out that baby boy, right? We didn't know what it was. Found out she's pregnant. I was like, I'm 28. I'm not getting any younger. What's your fucking decision? And I was like, man the fuck up. And if she wants to keep the kid, let's roll with it. She wanted to keep it, obviously. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? One fucking life. If I die, one... My baby's one years old. There's two ways that my mom could look at it. She could be like, fuck, you left me with your, your son. Now I gotta take care of your son because you're dead now. Or she could be like, I have a piece of my son and his son. You know what I mean? I think that in, in life, things are taken too serious and too like literal and stuff like that. But like women having, like people having kids. A bunch of kids that are broke is really dumb. I think that's fucking stupid. And this if is, you have one and you're broke, but you're like, you know what? I'm. This is a, a reflection to my kid, boy or girl, to show them, hey, I love you so much that I'm broke, but this is your opportunity to learn from this and become... More well up. That is a that's good. But if if someone's broke and they keep pumping out kids and they're not teaching their kids like, hey, this is not the way to do. That's fun. What do you think about that? That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Is that that chica? Get her on the P key street. Nah, 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 no, but I think that's a good way. That's a good way. I asked her if she wanted to come home, and she's like, "I gotta keep gift wrapping." I was like, "I keep." You came out the desk. Oh yeah, it's later over there too. Yeah. But yeah, like seriously, like fucking three years ago, two years ago, even I was like, I don't even want kids at all. I don't want kids. But then that's just how fucking. I don't know. All of a sudden, I met my girl. But before I met her, too, I was like, hey, a little demise wouldn't hurt. I'm fucking... Because I kept thinking, now, I think I'm going to die every day. Then I wake up, I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm just going to die today. <laughs> but I don't I don't look forward to it, and I don't shy away from it. I'm like, if it happens, it happens. What, the kid or death? Death. The band or actual death? Me, death. Like, I'm going to die. Demise death or... Demise death. No, demise means death. I know. That's why that's my name, and that's why when I got interviewed by that chick that we met, she's like, why did you choose that name? I was like, because it's inevitable. You're going to meet that shit no matter what you're the mind. It's like, it's inevitable. So I was like, like me. What? You're going to hear I me. Like the bottom, now I'm happy. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's why it sucks to, to, uh, but then that's why I'd rather make it work than not work to go up with these boys. Because yeah. it's either I could be like, sorry, guys, I'm a dad now. I can't go over there. Or I can be like, yeah, I can do both. That happens to a lot of people too. They just shut. Same with, like, even what? guys that just have girlfriends. Yeah. They shut down. You don't even see them no more. I was surprised when, when Joey told me that Fatty A's coming by tomorrow. Because Fatty A's married now. He's a married man. And he, oh, he's going to come through tomorrow? I was just like, what? Ace. Look at that pajama. <laughs> you need to fucking make an album with that fucker. I need a what? I said you need to make an album with that fucker. It was always and it'll but, never happen. The, the thing with it, the, that's why okay. I always make an emphasis on us. Yes. As great as a musician, Fatty A is. No hate. It's all real talk. Me and him never messed. When it came to writing together, we 
we've known each other since we were like 14, 15 or 14. We wrote maybe two songs. Rock yeah. songs. Yeah. Like two or three rock songs. But never we played, like, never performed, right? Never performed. We never could like sit down and just, I have an idea, let's fucking go with this. Like, you know what I mean? And then you just write and just fucking, just takes off. That rarely ever happened. It was either like, he wrote something from from front to back, everything, and I would just add vocals to it. Yeah. Or I would write something front to back, and then he would add just. Like, but it would never get whatever. complete, huh? Like fucking like the there drum. There was never day, like any like, type of like writing collaboration. Like right as you go, like oh, what if we do this right here? No, 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 no. You know, like bouncing ideas off each other, and a lot of it had to do with just because he was so. Um, just like nice yep like you told you know me what I mean like was, oh that's cool and you're like really I, I didn't even like it was hard to tell it. like like kind of like art hmm. no like <laughs> art, art's not even like too nice <laughs> there you go. Just, I like that one I was just, like, like <laughs> art just like listens <laughs> he you might be quiet or whatever but you just listen to it and then you, you play it and then eventually you, you keep playing it and listening and then it evolves into whatever you figure out and it works and that's why we're never like, what the fuck, Art? You know what I mean? <laughs> we're not like, Art, why aren't you fucking doing this? It's because like eventually I'll hear it and I'll be like, fine, whatever he's playing, it works. Sounds cool to me. Because if it didn't... No, but you told me... Like, then someone would um, suggest something. Hey, what if you do something? We all do it. Yeah, man. Why don't you just be that day it's stop like, playing with my feet? It's like, uh, it's it's like Chi Chang said in that one Deftones documentary. The longer one. And he's just well, like, yeah, like, this is how our writing process goes. Hey, you. Why don't you try this on the guitar? Like, why don't you try this? Hey, shut up. You are the fucking drums. Why don't you play the drums? Hey, I don't know. I don't know. They're like all yelling at each other. Hey, it's perfect for real. He says it though. He goes, that's kind of how the writing goes. Hey, you. What if you try this? Shut up, dude. I'm playing bass. Why don't you fucking mind your own business? All right, man. You know, Abe's just, just over there chilling on the drums. Like, you guys are all crazy. And uh, one of the classic Abe kind of yeah moments. It's like white pony days. And he's like, I just sit here all day and wait. I just wait. I wait till we go up on that stage and rock. Not because the, the guy was like fucking videotaping me. And it's like, I just wait. I just wait to rock. That's like, yeah, to wait to rock. I gotta wait for you guys to do all your stuff. <laughs> you know, and then I get fucked. Or it's like, it's right here, Demise. Oh, thanks, oh. man. I was looking for that everywhere. It was just like right there. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Damn, that's a good game to watch over there. I gotta go. <laughs> so if you have work at 1, I let it, I delayed it. I let them know already. You see, no. So you have work at 11. Yeah. 11 a.m.? You gotta leave here at 10? Yes. 10? Mm-hmm. Hey. Oh, wait, you have work at 11 p.m.? Yeah. I am will die to Yeah, bro. Oh, oh, no wonder why you didn't want to drink. Yeah. I thought 11 a.m. No. You're no. Like, you're like, Tomorrow. You pussy have a beer. That's why it's called your pussy. <laughs> I didn't you know, know this guy was fucking great, bro. Yo. I forget. That's all I was saying. It'd be cool if we did Saturday, but now Saturday, I'm like, we don't have shit. What, leave Saturday? No, fucking this. Oh. Because... No work on Sunday. No work on Sunday. No work any days. Hey, I work little, but I save. One of my quotes, I, I came up with two quotes. One of them says, Don't you, you might, you may work more than me, but you spend more than me too. Uh-huh. So like, that was the thing that was cool about working two jobs last, uh, right around the time last year. It's right around this time. Checks coming in. Because right right you're right. working. And you're sleeping. You don't even have time to shop. So you're saving without even trying. Next thing you know. Oh, I'm, that's one thing I want to talk about, too. It's like, oh, fuck. Having a... Uh, you know, it'll, it'll give you a direction. It'll give you money. But it might hold you from, like, creating that album. Or creating that song. So that's why I'm like, you know, right now, as of right now, I'm going to put the job on the side... And my, my girl sees my bank account 
it's it's not fucking big, it's not small, but it's steady. It's savage. I'm showing her no, I'm showing her like I don't need to work fucking this much. You know what I mean? But I also don't spend on shit besides fucking car insurance, food, groceries, when we want to go out, fucking the rent, rubbers. all that shit, rubbers. No rubbers. Shoes. Obviously. No and rubbers. then, no, no, I, I fucking was like, but other than that, I'm like, we don't, you know, there's no need to work. I don't need to grind. I don't need to grind my fucking... I don't need to stress and grind on shit that I don't want to fucking do. There's no... Because, like that Jordan Peterson, note number one, bitch. You know what I did Jordan when I, right after said, I listened to that? Did an R&B song. And it sucked. Yeah, Prime is sucked. Did it. <laughs> this guy, Jordan Peterson, he was on Joe Rogan podcast, and Joe Rogan said... Today, I didn't listen to the whole podcast on Joe Rogan. I just listened to the snippet ones. But I found out today, after I've been looking up Jordan Peterson, after hearing him a couple of weeks ago. Okay. But Joe Rogan was like, "That was one, you're, this is one of my favorite podcasts of all time. And then at the end of it, More than Tom it goes DeLong. out, he's just like, he's like, Tom Dildo Dildo Oh, Dildo. Tom DeLong. That's it. Who's that guy? She's fucking crazy, though. No, he's he's very he's fucking dope. I know he's very adamant about aliens. He's shit. always been. He's in the Blink One Eighty Two. It's called Aliens Exist on their biggest album ever. And I'm like, fuck yeah, man, hell yeah, you know, like everyone's own reality. They can fucking think what they want. Yeah, for sure. And look at how one of the biggest bands, Blink One Eighty Two, not the greatest music, but they. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> This is over. This is you over. Last <laughs> one of your regular Blink. guests. Oh, the Starting my own. But, but, he's, but the Jordan Peterson guy, Joe Rogan said at the end, it's like my favorite, and then it's like hey, that was enough. three hours. He's like that was three hours. But basically, the Jordan Peterson thing you that I sent this guy. What are you meaning on me? He was like. He's like, go on. What was he saying? <laughs> He's listening. Hey, 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 hey. The Jasta Show. Who's that? The Hosta? Rex Brown? What? Oh. You got John Crean on there? Oh, I'm all like, oh. Rex Brown. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I don't know the fucking interview, Sean. Rex Brown was an underrated guitarist. I mean, bassist. Who? Rex Brown. Bassist. Look at all these... Guys on his podcast. Imagine having to play with fucking oh, Dimebag there all the time. Jesus. Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. Is this the hate music? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you know what though? Corpse grinder. He doesn't have a blender and grinder. He doesn't have handles on his. So fuck him. You know who else he doesn't have? Yellow Santa Claus. <laughs> Yellow Santa Claus. He's got Corey on here. Oh, is that Corey Taylor? Jim. Corey. I don't give a shit. He didn't have art. Jim Beam. He Jim didn't have handles. Or he didn't have Nick. Nick. From Texas. The guy that... From Texas. Texas. I put a P keys. It's, it's called... God, Religion, The Universe, and Deep Thoughts. Featuring Nick from... Nick. He's from Texas. But they kept hitting me up. Like, call me. You gotta call me, man, please. And I hit him up. Then he's like, Demise. Demise. Holy shit. I been wanting to talk to you. And I was like, hey, we'll set something up. So then, like two Sundays ago, I called him, yeah, and then we eight. talked for like fucking almost two hours. Ooh. And then it's up there and shit, and then he shared it. Because he kept telling all of his friends, I want to talk about this, this, and that. And his friends were like, okay. 
and then his friends, and then he found our shit. And he he mentioned how you said in the pinkies. Who's this? He's like, hey, Nick. Oh, Nick. He mentioned how you said, yeah, I almost made like three G's, but I only got like 1,600 or some shit. And then, see, he listened. And I was like, hey, man, thanks for being on it. He's like, dude, it's a pleasure, man. It's a, oh, no, he's like, it's a fucking honor. I was like, hey, man, it's a pleasure to be on. And he was just like, fuck, man, I'm so glad to be honest. And I was just like, hey, man, let's keep going. Let's keep getting more people on this shit. It's fucking... Wherever the fuck, it doesn't matter what we're talking about, as long as we're just learning, that's it, learning, just fucking expanding, or debating, it could be debating. You have Bravo on the podcast? Fuck yeah! I'm gonna be like, you're fucking, are you gay, Bravo? You wanna touch my balls? You know know how that all started, right? Right here. Yeah. One is like, what do you think of me? To me, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, what do you, you want to know my honest opinion? He's like, yeah. It's like, I thought you were fucking gay. Like, I thought you were a faggot. Literally. I literally thought you liked men. He's like, I don't like men. I'm like, I just, you asked what I thought. The first impression of you, I thought you were gay. He's like, no, I'm not gay. I don't like men. That's fine. But that's what I thought. Now I know you're not gay. Maybe. But that still doesn't Maybe. change the first impression that I had of you. No, because fucking... And then he goes, you want to know what I thought of you? And I was like, well, now that we're talking about it, sure. And he goes, I thought you were a douche. And I was like, and I still am. <laughs> and I, he said that? No, I, I said that. No, he said, no, I thought you were a douchebag. Douche like, this cocky motherfucker in a bed. And he's fucking wearing a hat. And he's fucking got his that hair. And he's, he's down. You know, no, he's, he's not. He is, dude. That's how his TV's blurry. Yeah. It is. We mean, like, I said something earlier Hair regarding, regarding Joey. That hair. And I was like, what did I say? I was like, something, something. Joey's something. And he goes, yeah, Joey is racist. And we're just like, what? <laughs> you said Joey's racist? It's like, no, but we'll go with that. That, that was funnier. <laughs> I, I forget. I mean, he already said. We were, that was for your We're just going to stick with that one. He's like, but you said Joey's racist, right? And I'm like, no. Why the fuck would I say that? Jesus Christ. You're like, you still don't fucking hear me. You fucking guy. What time is it at? It's 10. Really? Where do you got to be? At work. Work? I know. Where's your work at? Where's your work? Fremont. Oh, that's oh, close. Oh, Fremont. It's not bad. That ain't San Francisco. You want to eat something before you go? Like you drink or something? No, I won't take one. Oh, you want to take one in the tub? You know what'd be, you know what'd be hella beam? A chicken parmesan. I'm like a fucking old Italian grandma. You take some. I'll put some in the Tupperware for you. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're not leaving the house with your empty stomach. Okay, you're not going to work. <laughs> I can't leave my stomach. It's a fantastic. It's a fantastic. A parmesan chicken sandwich. I like the veal ones, but I have so much fucking chicken in my freezer. And Joey just blew my mind one day. He goes, I never had chicken parm before. And me and Dini were like, I've never had it either. I was like, oh, I said, oh, I really? Did you fucking hear this guy? Did you hear this fucking guy? Yeah, yeah, this is really corner. Corner. Well, because Dini's a fucking whopper himself, right? No, Joey said he hasn't. No, no, but Dini's a whopper. Yeah, too. me and Dini were looking at him like, I don't know whether we should make chicken parm for him or just jump him. No, no, not, not jump him. Leave him with the fish. Just leave him with the horse's head in his bed. <laughs> leave him with the fish. Oh! 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 Oh!
Hello. Oh, go by. Okay. If you were to have a taco, where do you eat? Oh, asada. Of course. Really? Asada? Yeah. I'll, I'll eat a... You can't go wrong with asada. Okay, it I'll works in everything, too. Yeah. That's the Depends. Depends, Depends on how they make it, too. Yeah. Because some places, they don't... Like, if you if you get the, the pastor that's, like, fucking... It's not off the fucking... The thing, the shivel. The, yeah. Oh, the, the shivel's good. Not the, yeah, that's better. The meat spinner. And they just well, the meat spinner. You go yeah, to some places, and it's the fucking, like, meat bubble and shit. Yeah, you just shit chilling in a Ziploc bag. Exactly. And like, shh, shh, shh. The pillow's all salty, I feel like. But, asada is good. And, uh, obviously, pastor yeah. is good. But when I want a little textural change, because those are both very flavorful, but they're more uh, coarse. It's a little more rough. Lengua is so flavorful and so tender. Dude. Yeah. And cabeza. It's so fucking flavorful. It's so tender and soft. Yeah. Like, I just was recently introduced to that from, from my boy Omar. And he's like, oh, you got cabeza? Cabeza? I was just like, Ah, dude. And then when I went to his little wedding party afterwards, they had fucking cabeza and fucking goat. They didn't have any pork because they were like hardcore Christian. Yeah. And I was just like, I'll try the fucking goat. I never had that before. I never had goat. I had lamb. So I had to. And they had fucking homemade horchata. And it was just in the backyard over here by Julio's house. It was just well, in the backyard, yeah. dude. Just like... Big old Mexican family and just like some white guy just eating fucking food. <laughs> yeah, but what's funny is you're not, <laughs> you're not like, white though. You're not like white. No, I know, but they're just like, they were all like, I'm like, oh yeah, I know the groom. Like, really? He's like, yeah, he used to work with me, but he got fired because he's an idiot. <laughs> nah. He's like, they're, just like, like <laughs> they're all tripping out. They're like, yeah, man, you're fucking, you're Omar's age. I was like, I'm 32. They're like, no, I'm. I was like, and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that throw up audio with you. Oh! You ever heard it? <laughs> it sounds like I'm crying, dude. No, I don't. Uh, oh, you know what? Play the basketball. No, no, no. Play it in bed. You don't have it? I do. You I gotta, still have it. You gotta put that on. Play it in bed. I don't know where the fuck. I think it's on this, this fucking. Dude. Really? Right. And then, and then, fucking Terabee, Terabee, really on the background. Happy New Year, Casey. Happy New Year, Casey. <laughs> You're leaving soon, right? Yeah, right now. No, 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 no. Hold on, let me find it. I think it's on this fucking Terabee. So wait, hold on. Let me go to find it. What are you guys gonna take?